Hey guys, Jason here, and today we're going over the top phones at $100. We're looking at budget phones today, and I'm just going to kind of detail after scouring the internet, doing my research on reviews and videos and all that stuff, the best findings of phones I could find at the $100 price point. At the same time, I do want to kind of say uh, this is going to be the start of a new series on the channel. So basically, I'm just going to sit here after doing my research and tell you guys about the best phones I've found at a particular price point. Uh, and of course, I'm open to suggestions. So like, if you want me to find the best phones under 200 bucks because that's your price point, then uh, definitely drop me comments down below telling me that and I'll do my research based upon that. But uh, yeah, it's the start of a new series where I'm just going to show you the best phones at particular price points to fit your budget needs and today is 100 bucks so let's go ahead and get into those phones all right so the first phone on the list is the umidigi a7 pro not to be confused with the umidigi a5 pro which has already been reviewed and featured pretty heavily on the channel i made a video about it last year which did pretty well and uh, the umidigi a7 pro is an incremental upgrade to it it's definitely not an overhaul but it, it takes the best features of this guy, kind of just adds onto them, and thus creates a really good option, really good phone for this year. So uh, I got a little bullet point here of things that stayed the same from last year. So in that list are the build design, it's still got that uh, really classy, sorry about the smudges, you might be able to see all that, but uh, it's a nice rounded corners, really nice big screen that covers a lot of the front of the phone with a little teardrop or a water drop camera up at the front so it's got that same build design and uh, the processor stayed the same with the helio p23 it's got the same amount of ram screen size resolution battery life and what's interesting is even the accessories stayed the same so uh, if you remember from last year you got a screen protector on the front of the phone and also a case uh, in the box included as well and I thought that was pretty cool because like details, you know, detail oriented stuff, stuff that may not be a super huge main selling point, but is also really nice to have. So we got that carried over to the A7 and uh, the improvements uh, come in the form of, first of all, the camera. Now, here's the thing about the camera. This guy, the camera was, I will say capable because you could get good photos out of it, but most of the time you had to put some amount of effort into it just because the camera was not that good and like i said in my review of it probably the worst use of an f 1.8 main i've ever seen ever but uh the new a7 promises to be better claims it's better but i honestly i, I feel like it would take more than just one year's innovation to make it a better camera although like i said most of the problems were in software but anyway they did improve the camera, they said they did. Uh, they added a, another camera, it's a macro camera, and uh, really, I'm not impressed by adding cameras to phones. I don't think it makes them much better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play safe and say that the camera is probably just decent, capable of good stuff, but still requires some effort in that regard. Uh, the Android version this year is Android 10, so that's good, you got the latest version of Android right now. And they changed the charging interface from micro USB to USB-C. And you know, I really don't care. I said that in my earbuds review, it's not a big deal to me, but uh, it is cool to see that as things progress, things are getting more updated and more up to speed. So that's good. And uh, beyond that, they actually upped the storage. So they doubled it from 32 gigs to 64 gigs as base. And uh, that's pretty cool because as we move into the future, you know, apps are by nature gonna take up more storage. Things are gonna, you know, you're gonna expect more from your phone as you go forward. So that's good to see as well in this upgrade to the A5. So definitely the Umida G A7 is one of the best options right now for hundred bucks for a smartphone. All right, the next phone is the Redmi 9. And this is probably no surprise to those of you that know much about budget smartphones or just cheap smartphones throughout the years because the Redmi has been one of the longest running, one of the most consistent series of phones in terms of being good every single year that they come out. And uh, the Redmi 9 is no stranger to that game. It's uh, one of the best phones that you can get for 130 bucks right now. And I know this video is that $100 price point and Please don't crucify me in the comments just because this phone is a little bit over that price point. You know, it'd be stupid to include a $130 phone in an under $200 video because it's 70 bucks off from the price point. But uh, I don't think 30 bucks is too much more drop over the A7 on a phone. And uh, it actually is a little bit better than the A7, I'd say. 
But uh, the real advantage is that because Redmi's been around so long, they're a little bit more polished. They're a little bit more uh, well-rounded in terms of a smartphone, I'd say. Uh, so the base build of the Redmi 9 is a 2 to 1 1080p plus IPS screen with a very similar design, honestly, to the A7. It's got a great screen, great screen to body ratio. It's got that water drop uh, front camera design that, you know, kind of just drips from the top of the screen. That's where your front camera is. So the, the body, the build and the put together of this phone is solid. But proceeding beyond that, it's got better processors than the A7. The benchmarks, you know, I'm, I'm not one that's big on benchmarks. I mean, who is in 2020? But uh, it's got better benchmark numbers, regardless of what option you go with. So it's gonna perform a little bit better day to day, maybe a little bit better general use. And then it's got better cameras. I will say that when I had the Note 7, which I had, it's been like a year and a half now, but when I had the Note 7, it had from Redmi, the, uh, the Note 7 to Redmi phone, it had better cameras than I expected for its price point. It was like 150, 180, so but in that price range. And the cameras are great. Like it was definitely better than what I get out of this guy, which I assume is the same as the A7. So I will say that I trust Redmi cameras more and Redmi Glass more. And I've looked at sample photos. I looked at uh, tests and reviews online and uh, it looks really good and what you'd expect from a Redmi line of phones. And uh, really, in summary, closing points, the main reasons to spend more money on the Redmi over the Umidigi would be the cameras, general performance, and then the small details like battery life and optimization. The battery is a little bit bigger on the Redmi 9 and the optimization that you'd expect from a bigger company like Xiaomi is gonna result in a better phone and you know less things like random crashes or things not being compatible. That's something that you don't have to worry about with a bigger company. So the Redmi 9 is definitely a good, I don't know why I keep moving so awkward with my hands just because of the setup, but the Redmi 9 is definitely a good option for 130 bucks in 2020. And the third option on this list of phones at that $100 price point is the Umidigi A3X. And this guy's actually sitting a little bit under the price point, sitting at 80 bucks. And it's honestly really comparable to the Umidigi A7, except the fact that it's kind of a watered down version. It's a little bit more budget, a little bit less features, but of course at that lower price. So, um, well, I put down in my notes that it's a significant loss in features, but honestly, it's it's where you'd expect it. You, you get what you'd expect for 80 bucks as opposed to 100 bucks. Um, so you save that 20 bucks and you get a slower Helio A22 processor. Now, I've looked at some benchmarks, I looked at the numbers, and it seems like it's not a crazy difference. It's not like, you know, the, the first, the Galaxy S versus the Galaxy S10 or something like that. It's like, the difference would be in just general day-to-day -day stuff. You'd notice a little bit more lag, maybe it'd freeze up a little bit more, but it's nothing crazy. And you'd still, when it comes to doing what you'd want to do, you'd still be able to do everything, if you know what I'm saying. Um, maybe if you're trying to do games that push the very limits of the A7, you wouldn't be able to play them on the A3X, but beyond that, you're still going to be able to play Temple Run, you're still going to be able to play Minecraft, and you're still going to be able to watch YouTube and scroll through Twitter and do day-to-day -day stuff relatively hiccup-free. But uh, beyond that, there's also a 5.7-inch display that is 720p, and it kind of breaks my heart a little bit as a tech YouTuber to see a 720p screen in 2020. You know, I wish everything was 1080p+. Plus. I'm not the biggest fan of Quad HD just because I think it's overkill, but I would like to see everything 1080p in 2020. But, you know, 80 bucks, can't expect much. So this guy's got 720p, and it is a slightly smaller screen, so it's not like you're losing uh, PPI that badly, but, you know, it, it's trade-offs. You, you save 20 bucks, you get a less, less quality screen. Beyond that, you drop one gig in RAM from the A7 down to three gigabytes, and that's not even a big deal, really, because the Redmi had three gigs of RAM as well, so it's not like you can't have good performance, but it is one gig dropped uh, in RAM, and also you do lose quite a bit of storage with 32 gigs of storage as opposed to 64. So as you'd expect, with dropping 20 bucks off the price tag, you do lose some good features and some perks. Uh, that you got with the A7, but not everything's bad with the A3X. It's not, you know, 
uh, just a bare bones phone with nothing to its name, it's still one of the best phones at its price, at 80 bucks. And I did list a couple benefits, put down some uh, features, some good stuff that comes along with that price tag. And those include Android 10, which is really good to see in 2020 on even a budget phone. The latest version of Android, you got a good design. It takes hints from the A7, even though it's got a little bit bigger bezels and it's a little bit thicker. Uh, it still takes the idea and some hints from the design of the A7, so it still looks good. It's got the water drop display, it's got that camera, so it's not, you know, it doesn't go super old school just to compensate for the price. Uh, and it's got a fingerprint reader on the back, which is good to see because I don't like face ID or face unlock, especially in this period of time uh, when we're wearing masks all day. Alrighty, so the Umidigi A3X was actually the last phone that I'm going to feature in this video. Uh, I wish this list was longer, honestly, but I picked out the ones that I can recommend and the ones that are the best phones at 100 bucks. Uh, and really, this is the end of the video. I guess I do want to say that there were other options out there at 100 bucks, but I did the research. Like I looked through all the reviews um, and comparisons and spec sheets and like stuff like the the Doogie, however you pronounce it, N20, and the Cubot P40. Like they sound good, but Compared to the other phones on this list, I can't recommend them because, you know, as a tech reviewer, I gotta have your best interest in mind as well. And like the the Doogie, you know, even if it's a hundred bucks and it's a pretty decent phone across the board, if it's got a worse design than the A7 and it's a year behind in software, I'm not gonna be able to recommend it. So, uh, yeah, I got the good stuff for you guys. The top three phones sitting at a hundred bucks and uh, hopefully enjoyed the video. Drop me suggestions for other price points down below, like I said, and uh, y'all stay safe, stay healthy, uh, keep it tuned, subscribe down below. I'll catch you in the next video.